Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna test out Amazon's best-selling 4K NVR security camera packages from Swan, Reolink, and Amcrest. And I'm gonna show you why after extensively testing all three systems, I decided to recommend the Reolink 4K NVR system to my good friend who asked for help installing a camera system on his house. Modern network video recorders, or NVRs, are purpose-built devices that combine the functionality of a PoE switch, video decoding hardware, and networked storage for significantly less money than you could put together yourself. When building your own system, there is a huge range of software to choose from, but even if you settle for the cheapest parts available, you won't even come close to matching the value of an NVR package. In this video, I'll be testing out the three best-selling 4K NVR packages on Amazon. The cheapest package, the Reolink RLK 800B4, comes with four 4K cameras, an 8-port PoE NVR, and a 2TB surveillance-grade hard drive. The next most expensive is the Swan 885-804, which also features an 8-port PoE NVR with four 4K cameras and a 2TB hard drive. And the last and most expensive option is the Amcrest NV4108E, an 8-port PoE NVR with four 4K cameras but without a hard drive. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna add a $60 two terabyte surveillance grade hard drive for testing. Based strictly on initial value, the real link package earns the first point in this NVR showdown. Digging a little bit deeper, there are some important differences worth mentioning. First, the real link and Swan cameras are not on VIF compatible, which means that they only work with specific NVRs from their own brand. And that becomes important if you're gonna to wanna to upgrade individual parts of your system later on. The Amcrest system comes with their IP8M turret cameras, which are OnVIF compatible and can be easily used with any NVR that supports the widely used OnVIF standard. Amcrest earns an easy point in this category for camera compatibility. Speaking of OnVIF, according to the listing, the Amcrest NVR also has limited compatibility with cameras from other brands that support OnVIF. And in my tests, I found that the Amcrest NVR was compatible with cameras that were manufactured by Dawa and Amcrest, but not with any other camera brands that I own. And that includes Reolink, Ubiquiti, Hikvision, HFWS, and Tuya. This compatibility isn't particularly surprising to me, since in my research, it seems like the Amcrest NVR is actually just a rebranded Dawa NVR. And although the documentation for the Reolink NVR says it doesn't support cameras from other brands, in my test, it actually had similar limited compatibility to the Amcrest NVR. And it was able to automatically detect and add all the network cameras from Amcrest and HFWS, in addition to, of course, detecting my Reolink cameras. But it wasn't compatible with Hikvision, Ubiquiti, or Dawa. If you want to add cameras from other brands to the Reolink NVR, they need to be connected to your main network via a different PoE switch. The Swan NVR doesn't appear to have any OnVIF compatibility and only detected Swan-based cameras that were directly connected to the NVR. In the NVR compatibility category, I'm going to give Amcrest and Reolink half a point each for their limited compatibility with other brands and no points to the Swan that has no intercompatibility with other brands. The one area that you're gonna be making the biggest sacrifice by using a dedicated NVR is the user interface, which seems to be exactly the same as I remember it from when I bought my first NVR almost 15 years ago. PC-based NVRs like Blue Iris offer an intuitive and responsive user interface, while standalone NVRs still require you to memorize the right combination of right and left clicks to get to the menu you're looking for, and they rely on a clunky on-screen keyboard to enter information and change your settings. That being said, I didn't have any issues with NVR functionality. All three brands were able to display the live view, review recorded footage, and export footage as long as you know which menus to use and which buttons to click. But to me, the Amcrest NVR seemed to have a slightly better user interface than the rest. So for NVR interface, I'm going to begrudgingly give one point to Amcrest for having the least terrible interface. Even though it seems like I'm being hard on these NVRs for their interfaces, it's important to remember that dedicated NVRs are purpose-built devices that are relatively underpowered compared to a PC. So they need to dedicate most of their resources to recording and previewing the video streams from your cameras and not to a beautiful user interface. And even though the Blue Iris NVR interface is much better, it's probably not $600 better, which is about the difference in price between a dedicated NVR and a PC that's powerful enough to handle 4K cameras with Blue Iris. One really nice thing about these NVRs is that the setup wizards have come a long way in the past few years, which means that even a complete novice user can be up and running in a matter of minutes. 
This is one area that a dedicated NVR gives a much more enjoyable experience compared with a PC-based NVR like Blue Iris, which can easily cause feature and option overload for a new user. Since all these NVRs were equally easy to set up, I'm going to give them all one point in the ease of setup category. In theory, you won't even need to use your NVR interface at all because the mobile and PC-based applications will provide you with all the features that you need. But in practice, that's not really the case. For mobile apps, the Real Link system uses their Real Link iOS or Android app, which I've actually really enjoyed. It gives you the option to select live view of any of your cameras or put multiple cameras on the screen. You can view recorded footage from your cameras either by full playback or by motion events only. And even though the Real Link app is by far the easiest to navigate and find the footage you want, saving footage was not always reliable. Exporting 4K footage from the mobile app didn't work, and neither did exporting footage from the non-Real Link cameras. The only export function that worked consistently was my Real Link RLC 410 cameras, which exported quickly and easily and at great quality. Hopefully these bugs will be addressed in future updates, which would make the Real Link app my favorite mobile interface out of these three brands by far. But for now, it's a little bit buggy. The Swan NVR uses the Swan Home Safe app, which allows for easy live view, but only in a distorted 4x3 format, and the playback feature is similar to the clunky channel-based search system that you find on the NVR, which is far from ideal. There is no option to save recorded video from the app to your camera roll, though you can record clips directly from the live view into their app, but I'm not really sure when that would be useful. The Amcrest NVR uses Amcrest View Pro, which has a very similar user interface to the Swan NVR, but with slightly more polish. You still need to search recorded footage by date and NVR channel, but you do have the option to record that footage to the camera roll, and every feature of the app just seemed to work flawlessly. For mobile app usability, I'm gonna give a full point to Amcrest because everything worked exactly as expected. But I'm also gonna give a half a point to Reolink because their app feels the most modern and it has the best user interface. If saving 4K footage worked on the Reolink app, I would have given it the full point. The Swan app combines the less than stellar user interface of the Amcrest app with the bugginess of the Reolink app. So no points for them. Next are the PC apps. A good PC app should offer continuous live view as well as access to recorded footage. This is another area where dedicated NVRs are gonna be extremely inferior to Blue Iris, which offers an amazing native UI and a web-based UI with full functionality. The first software that I downloaded was called Swan View Link, and it didn't work at all with the 4K Swan NVR. After looking around the Swan website a bit, I found a different app called Home Safe View that sent me to a very professional Dropbox link to download. The HomeSafe View app was able to add the NVR and the Live View worked fine, but even though the search function worked and found recorded footage, I wasn't actually able to view that footage. Reolink offers their own program called the Reolink Client, which to my surprise was actually the exact same program as SwanLink View. In this case, I was able to add the Reolink NVR easily, but initially I was pretty unimpressed by the Reolink Client because it kept crashing the NVR. I was able to trace the issue to the Amcrest 4K camera that I had added via OnVIF. After removing the Amcrest 4K camera, the rest of the cameras functioned perfectly and the playback was buttery smooth, even though it did still use the same calendar and channel-based search function that I've already complained about plenty of times in this video. Amcrest offers its own unique program that worked decently well after I got the hang of the interface, and it offered both live viewing and a decent user interface for viewing recorded footage. In this category, both the Reolink and the Amcrest had working solutions, but neither of them were great, and they were miles behind Blue Iris in terms of features and usability. So half a point here for both Amcrest and Reolink. Apps and programs don't matter at all if the cameras aren't able to perform their primary function of recording motion on your property. Each of these NVRs have highly configurable motion detection with standard options like scheduling, motion sensitivity, and zones. The Swan NVR also includes a bunch of other options that have to do with the PIR sensors on the front of each camera. These PIR options were the feature that I was most excited to test because I've been really impressed with the PIR sensors on my battery-powered cameras that I've been testing. In theory, PIR should be less susceptible to false motion events because it tracks the movement of heated objects rather than just changes in the image contrast. But in my test, it just didn't work. Not only was it slow to detect me, often not triggering until I'd been in frame for a few seconds, but it seemed to have equally as many, if not more, false alarms than a standard contrast-based detection. I expected to give the Swan an extra point in this category, but in practice, it's just not any better than the Reolink or Amcrest cameras at detecting motion. So one point for each system here for having passable working motion detection. 
If you really want to be sure that you have footage when and where you need it, I'd always recommend enabling continuous recording for those zones. And it's one of the things that makes hardwired cameras vastly superior to the wireless battery powered cameras that are becoming so popular. So with the NVR portion of this comparison out of the way, here's the current score. But these packages also come with four 4K cameras, and that makes up a significant portion of the cost and value. So let's take a look at those. First, let's talk about the installation. I love the Reolink mounting system, and I think it should be the standard for all bullet style cameras. A single hex screw loosens all of the joints just enough to allow the camera to be aimed properly and then easily tightened. In contrast, the Swan cameras have the worst mounting system imaginable. A separate screw for each axis and two screws for the roll adjustment. And to top it all off, when I finally got the camera into the position I wanted, I tightened the side screw only to have the threads break free and become unusable, meaning that camera can never be properly aimed again. The Amcrest cameras that come with this kit are turret style, well designed, and easy to mount, and aiming is done with a single set screw like most turret cameras. For mounting, one point for each Amcrest and Reolink, and zero points for Swan. In fact, the experience with the Swan was so bad that I'm tempted to take points away from their score, but I won't. Next, let's check out the daytime clarity of these cameras. To do this, I mounted each camera in the same location and I held up a sign at 10 feet, 25 feet, and 50 feet. For comparison, the winner from my last video was the Reolink RLC 410, which produced this image at 25 feet. This time, the Reolink 4K camera came out on top. And while you can tell that these images are higher resolution than the cameras in my last video, the compression artifacts are very noticeable. The Swan camera had the worst distortion, followed by the Amcrest. And as I said, the clearest image came from the real link, which was able to produce an impressively legible image of the 72 point font from 25 feet away. One point to the real link for daytime clarity. At night, the results were very similar, with the real link producing a really impressive image from 25 feet. And that result only becomes more impressive when compared to the other two cameras, which had pretty poor nighttime performance. So score another point for real link for nighttime clarity. And the real link has really emerged as the clear winner as far as camera performance is concerned. It's clear that all these companies are doing post-processing on their images, but Reolink seems to have really perfected their algorithms. Check out this image from 10 feet away. The Reolink image looks almost fake, but it's just the result of their specific post-processing. As I mentioned before, the downside to the Reolink cameras is that they're only compatible with the Reolink 4K NVR and not with Blue Iris or NVRs from other brands. But the good news is that the Reolink NVR does output an RTSP stream for each of its channels, so you can still add them to Home Assistant, and they even work with the new stream protocol, so you can embed them in Home Assistant notifications, and you can even stream them to your Google Cast devices. And I want to reiterate here that the video quality of these cameras is absolutely insane for the price. For under $500, you're getting four fantastic 4K cameras, a PoE switch, a two terabyte surveillance grade drive, and enough computing power to preview and record 4K video. If you don't already have an existing system and you want the best value, the Reolink 4K NVR package is an easy choice and it gets my full recommendation. If you already have an existing system using Amcrest or Dawa cameras, the Amcrest system is also pretty solid. And if you want the option to switch to Blue Iris later on, the Amcrest 4K cameras will be able to be reused in that system, unlike the Reolink 4K cameras. Aside from video quality, the main thing that prevents me from recommending the Amcrest system over the Reolink is the price. At $660, the Amcrest is over 30% more expensive than the Reolink. And compared with the other two packages, the Swan system is just bad. I'd like to be able to say something positive about it, but overall, it's just bad and you shouldn't buy it. As I mentioned earlier, after finishing this review, I helped a friend install a real link system in his house and we finished off the kit with the cameras that I recommended for my last PoE camera video, the real link RLC 410 and 420 5 megapixel cameras. The results are amazing and I can't believe that the total cost for a system of this quality is just over $600. If you want a camera system, but you don't want to run wires, I'm also working on a review and comparison of all the major battery-powered wireless cameras, including longevity and battery testing. So make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in that. Thank you to all my awesome patrons over at Patreon for supporting my channel and allowing me the freedom to buy and test hardware from competing brands to give you guys the best information when it comes to making decisions about your smart home. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookups.